the most frequent use of the shofar during the Middle Ages was to announce the arrival of Shabbat, the day of rest. Six blasts were sounded at various intervals. On Friday, just before noon, the first tikiyah was sounded <laughs> to call the people who worked in the fields. Then the second tikiyah was sounded <laughs> calling the shopkeepers and the city workers to stop their duties and go home. And just before sundown, the third tikiyah was sounded to call for the lighting of the Shabbat candles, followed by three calls, tikiyah, trua, tikiyah. Welcoming the Shabbat into people's homes. To announce the end of Shabbat and the beginning of the new week, a long call, the Tikiya Gedola, was sounded. Five species of kosher animals have provided the horns for the making of a shofar. Ram, goat, mountain goat, antelope, and gazelle. However, even though the animals need to be kosher, they do not need to be slaughtered in a kosher manner for their horns to be used in the making of a shofar. Although the cow, the bull, is a kosher animal, we do not use its horn because of its association with the golden calf that the Israelites built at the foot of Mount Sinai. To become a kosher shofar, the horn must be flawless, without a hole or even a crack in its body. It should, it should not be decorated with any sorts of painting and no additions like a mouthpiece are allowed. Currently, the shofar is sounded mainly during Rosh Hashanah and at the end of Yom Kippur. Four types of calls are used during the Rosh Hashanah service. Tkiyah, Shivarim, Trua, and at the end of Yom Kippur, a long blast, a Tkiyah Gedola, is sounded to symbolize God's acceptance of our prayers for repentance. In some congregations, the shofar is also sounded during the month of Elul, the last month of the Hebrew calendar before the new year, to prepare us for the 10 days of repentance between Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. <laughs> 